Hello class, today we're going to go ahead and do section 2.5 um, on scatter plots. The learning targets for today is that you will be able to construct and analyze scatter plots and you will also be able to write lines of best fit. And tomorrow we're also going to look at how to do a line of best fit um, on your graphing calculator, so be sure to bring that. Um, the main idea of algebra and one of the main reasons we need to learn it in schools lies in this chapter. Uh, in algebra, we can find patterns and relationships in data, generalize these patterns and use the data to make predictions of future events. And we're going to use prior knowledge of slope and linear equations to predict the, ver the future very accurately. So scatter plots can be very useful and they're used in everyday life. So all states and the District of Columbia have enacted laws setting 21 as the minimum drinking age. The table shows the estimated cumulative number of lives these laws have saved by reducing traffic fatalities. So what we're going to go ahead and do is plot the ordered pairs. So 1999 from our table is our year. It's on our x-axis and the lives in thousands is on the y-axis. So in 1999 it was 19.1. 2000 it was 20. 2001 it was 21. Uh, in 2002, it was 21.9, so just a little bit above. And 2003, it was 22.8. 22.8. 22 and we don't know what it is in 2015. So here is our data. So we were supposed to, for part A, plot the information above on the graph. So I have already went and done that. Part B, we need to draw a, a best line of fit. So through our data points, what we want to do is draw a line um, that has equal amount of points above it and below it. Um, so just try your best to go through as many points as you can. Mine kind of looks like it goes through all of them, but in reality it does not go through all of them because it's not an exactly perfect line. Uh, part C, we need to describe the correlation. So the correlation is, the way we talk about it, is positive, negative, or there's no correlation. So in this case, it looks like I have a positive slope and all the points seem to line up pretty closely. And since it has a, excuse me, looks like a positive slope, it is a positive correlation. And let's just make a note because it's a positive slope. Part D, it says write a predicted equation. So what we need to do is go ahead and pick two ordered pairs that our line goes through um, and write an equation for it. I am going to use 2020. If you notice, I have that ordered pair. And then I'm also going to use 2001 and 21 because it goes through there. So the first thing we need to do is find slope. Well, we just did that the other day. Y2 minus Y1 all over X2 minus X1. And if you go ahead and do that, you will get 1 over 1. So my slope is 1. Okay. The second thing that we need to do is to find our Y-intercept. So I'm going to put it in point slope. So y minus 20 is equal to my slope, and then x minus my x value. Um, I would distribute that 1, which I really don't need to do, because everything times 1 is just itself. And then I'm going to add 20 to the other side. So y is equal to x minus 1980. Once you go ahead and do that, here is our equation. And part E says to use your predicted equation to find the number of lives saved for the year 2015. Notice the year it is your x value. So I'm going to plug in 2015 for x. Into our equation we just came up with. And when you go ahead and take 2015 minus 1980, y is equal to 35. So we have saved about, and we should read, it's in thousands. 35,000 lives by increasing the drinking age to 21. Right? So I mentioned correlation. So 
what we need to know is what's positive, what's negative, and what's no correlation. So correlation means that there is um, a relationship between the, the data. So if you look at this first one with the positive correlation, as your X increases, so does your Y value increases. And they all kind of lie in the same shape um, and they're going upward, so it makes it positive. Same thing with negative, except for in this case, it has a negative slope because as you look from left to right, it is going down. And then the last one is a no correlation. If you look at that, there's dots everywhere. There is no correlation between those points. Okay, so in that case, it, you won't be able to find a line of best fit to predict. So line of fit or prediction equation, it is a line that closely approximates a set of data. So on the front, on the example that we just did, we found a line that approximates how many lives we will save over the years. Okay. Um, also, when we find the equation, okay, the prediction equation, like we found y equals x minus 1980 above, um, the equation that graphs, if you were to plot it, the line of best fit. And one thing I want you to know about the line of best fit is the line that I come up with may not be exactly the same as the line that you come up with. So you need to be careful um, in your answers because there could be a little bit variation in answers. We won't always have exactly the same unless we're using our calculator because that will find the very best. But if we're doing it by hand, it might not be the very best. All right, example two. The table shows the amounts of time five different students studied for their AP Euro exam and the grades each one of them received. Part A says make a scatter plot for this data. Well, my hours study will go on my X axis and the grade will go on my Y. And if you look at the hours studied, it ranges from one to 12. So I'm just gonna go ahead I don't think I have enough. For 12, I'm going to go count by twos. Then for my grade, it goes from 70 up to 98. So I probably don't want to start counting at, um, at zero. I probably want to start maybe a little bit higher than that. So what you need to make sure you do is put in a break. Just put it in there in that green. That shows that we're skipping some numbers. We're not going to start counting from zero. Um, so I'm going to label this 60. Let's go by tens. 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. Nobody got over 110. Nobody even got over 100. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to plot those points. Once you have those points plotted, I want you to go ahead and draw in a line of best fit. And using mine, we need to find the information for part B, the slope, the y-intercept, and the equation of the regression line. So I'm going to pick two points. I'm going to use this five, 580. And sometimes you won't always have to use one of the points that they gave you. I'm also going to use the point 890 right there. It is on my line, so I'm going to use 890. So to find my slope, 90 minus 80 over 8 minus 5, so I get 10 over 3. So that does not reduce, so I'll just leave it as 10 thirds. And my y-intercept, you could kind of guesstimate looking at your graph what your y-intercept is, but we might not be exact, so I'm going to go through and find it exactly. Um, so y equals, I'm going to do using slope-intercept form, my slope is 10 over 3, my um, x value is 8. I'll use the other one. Excuse me, I'm just going to rewrite this. So I'm going to use this point 890. So my y is 90. My slope is 10 over 3 times my x plus b. When I go ahead and do this, I get 80 over 3. 
and 90 minus 80 over 3 will give us 63 and 1 third is equal to B. So my y-intercept is 63 and 1 third. And then the equation of my line of regression, we just go ahead and put it all together. Um, so the grade is equal to my slope, 10 over 3 times the hour studied, plus my y-intercept, 63 and 1 third. So there is my equation of the regression line. And I just picked two points. Once again, if you pick two different points, you're going to get a little bit different line than me. Is that okay? Yes. Um, then finally it says, predict what score a student who studied 10 hours for the exam would receive. So I go ahead, plug 10 in here, and if you go ahead and put it in your calculator, the grade that they would get is a 96.6 repeating. So let's just go ahead and round that. Um, so you get 96... 96.667. That would be the grade they would receive. Okay, we're going to go ahead and stop the video there. We will do number three tomorrow in class and also remember to bring your graphing calculator so that we can do the line of best fit on there. Have a good evening and I will see you tomorrow.